Welcome to the Elk Talk Podcast with Randy Newberg and Corey Jacobson. Presented by the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation. The goal is what little you and I know about elk hunting, we share with people. I've got an elk building, it's like 120 yards away, what do I do? First off, the thought would never cross my mind when an elk being 120 yards away to call anybody <laughs> on a cell phone. <laughs> All elk. All the time. Only elk. Only elk. Well, it's us having conversations. So we usually go down some rabbit holes. But if you hunt with Corey Jacobson, you will find the landscape is full of rabbit holes. We're just going to make this up as we go. And you look at it like, oh, that's a target rich environment. But if you're trying to single one out, a solo target there is much easier to go into than a, a big group. We record everything, so there's no BS and no lying, no faking it with us. <laughs> Did we hit the record I button? I forgot to hit the record <laughs> button. If you want to know something about elk hunting, this probably isn't the podcast to listen to. <laughs> Could we give them a list of all the other podcasts well. where they might learn something? <laughs> The Elk Talk Podcast is brought to you by the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation, ensuring the future of elk, other wildlife, their habitat, and our hunting heritage. To become a member, go to rmef.org. The Elk Talk Podcast is also brought to you by Mountain Ops, making outdoor energy and performance nutrition to make you a stronger and healthier elk hunter. They have a full line of hunting-related supplements, including meal replacement shakes, multivitamins, pre-workout fuel, and post-workout recovery, and my favorite, their new performance protein bars that, by the way, are packed with 270 calories and 20 grams of protein, but contain less than 6 grams of sugar. Visit mountainops.com to learn more and to order, and be sure to use the promo code ELKTALK to save on your next order. The podcast is also brought to you by Gerber. Uh, Go to gerbergear.com and learn about the knives, the vital, the big game vital, the Gator Premium, all the things that we use when we're out in the woods, and not just knives, but also some really cool multi-tools that they have. And we have a promo code for Gerber as well. Just use the code ELKTALK to save 20% on your orders at gerbergear.com. And we are also brought to you by Rocky Mountain Hunting Calls. And Rocky Mountain Hunting Calls is the original designer and inventor of the pallet plate diaphragm that's completely changed the way elk calls are made and used. And to find out more and to order your elk calls, go to RockyMountainHuntingCalls.com or BuglingBull.com and use promo code ELKTALK and you're going to save 15% on all of your elk calls and elk call accessories. The Elk Talk Podcast is also brought to you by GoHunt.com. Uh, go to GoHunt.com and sign up for the Insider. The Insider is changing how hunts and hunting information are found. No doubt about that. Use promo code Elk Talk, and when you do, when you sign up for the Insider, you're going to get $50 of store credit, mad money, in their gear shop. Lastly, the University of Elk Hunting online course is a proud partner of the Elk Talk podcast. And within the University of Elk Hunting online course, you're going to find nearly 60 chapters organized in 17 modules of elk hunting instruction aimed at making you a more successful elk hunter. From planning and e-scouting to calling strategies and packing Every imaginable elk hunting topic is included in the online course. And regardless of your previous elk hunting experience or success, I'm confident the University of Elk Hunting online course will make you a more confident, more successful elk hunter. Just visit elk101.com and use the promo code ELKTALK to save 20% when you sign up for a membership to the University of Elk Hunting online course. And with that, Corey, we are ready to get into it. Let's jump into it. Happy lunchtime, Corey. How you doing? Hey, I'm not eating lunch. That's uh, I should be. I'm hungry. I, I'm hungry too. I, I had an orange for breakfast. I'm I'm trying to get like you, be this athletic mountain machine, but I'm you know I, I've kind of given up on that hope. But I still I've been <laughs> eating an orange every day for breakfast, just as part of that. Um, well, that's good. What was the quote that your grandma always had? The root of all frustrations is unrealistic expectations or something? Yeah. And so I didn't want to be frustrated. I didn't want to try to be like Corey because that's an unrealistic expectation. (laughs) 
Okay. Uh, well, at least you're that. eating an orange, and oranges are good. They, they are, but the bad part about buying oranges in Bozeman, Montana, the fruit truck gets here about once every four months, and it looks like they drug it along behind the truck from McCall, Idaho, to get here or something. <laughs> You like brown bananas? We got lots of them here in Bozeman. You like slimy oh, lettuce? Man. We we got it here. You know, we're, we're, whatever's in that lettuce you can get at the fruit stand in Bozeman or the produce store in Bozeman is beyond E. coli. It's some other derivative of mold and slime that isn't even E. coli anymore. So, well, that's, that's probably you, because you can't grow lettuce and oranges in January in Bozeman, so they're. They have to truck it in from so far away. Yeah. So talk about supply chain delays. That, you know, that's tolerable when we're talking computer chips or something, but a huge supply chain delay isn't that great with perishable items like produce. (laughs) Oh, well. I have never, I was, in fact, I mentioned something about a year ago that I remember as a kid, my grandma always had the vitamin D milk or the whole milk or whatever it was. It was mm-hmm. sour every time I went to her house. She had a little pint of it, and every time I'd go in there, the, the milk was, was rotten. I haven't had rotten milk for a long time, so I'm thinking they must put some uh, special preservatives in there that they didn't used to put in there. But in the last three months, I think I've had three jugs of milk go sour before the expiration date. So Yeah, I had that happen on my goat hunt in November. I had to run a camera guy home. I'm like, well, heck, I may as well stay the night. I've been gone back in Minnesota for a couple of weeks, so I didn't even look. Grabbed some milk, got my cereal before I was heading back up to meet the crew. I'm like, man, that kind of smells a little funny, but I'm in a hurry. So I wolfed it down, kind of, you know, tried not to puke while I was doing it. Boy, I didn't have a good dummy by the time I got up there, man. It's like, ooh, this is this wasn't a good idea. This is going to cost me so a day you, to go you smelled. You smelled that the milk was bad, and you. But I'd already ate poured it on my cereal, and I was in a hurry. So, man, I don't, I don't feel too sorry for you. <laughs> I, I feel sorry for myself. I'm the guy that opens the fridge and grabs the gallon jug of milk and unscrews the lid and just chugs it, and I get in trouble all the time <laughs> oh, from yeah. my wife for doing that. <laughs> but yeah, I, I've done that. I did that one time with rotten milk, and you know, as you're yeah. chugging milk, you aren't smelling it, and until you swallow a whole bunch yeah. of it. I bet you that yeah. didn't do you any favors. Well, it didn't. I didn't need a whole bowl full of it, so. Yeah. Wow. Well, hey, I don't know bad. what that has to do with Wyoming elk, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> we're to, that's what we're going to talk about today. It's not going to be, I don't think it'll be that long of a podcast. We just want to make sure people know, people understand there's deadlines. We do these every year before the deadline comes up. And we're about 10 days away from the Wyoming de- elk deadline of January 31st. Um, you got your application in? I do. Yeah. Me too. Got it in. Uh, I think I was a little arrogant last year and thought that I would be able to draw the regular tag. So I applied for the regular tag last year and was disappointed that I didn't draw it. So hmm. I... Uh, I have one extra point, and instead of taking my chances, I went ahead and applied for the special tag, which sounds great until you hit confirm and realize it's $1,283 for an elk tag in Wyoming for a uh, yeah. special. Just hit your credit card plus a 2.5% transaction fee. Yeah. It's like, man. So this is. But, you know, I yeah. think uh, it's, it's one of those things. Wyoming's a state where you can pay a little more and and get put in a special little pool that is a little easier to draw but just i was out on go hunt this morning looking at some statistics and realized that hey, you only gain one point between regular and special now so it yeah. takes uh almost four points to draw draw the regular tag and it takes you three to draw the special tag on the <coughs> general which general right. tag in wyoming i don't remember how many units there are but there's a, a big handful of units you can hunt archery and rifle actually in that general pool so yeah it's it's been creeping like that the general has for you know last four or five years and if you want to use my grandma's statement again about you know frustration being the (laughs) The result of unrealistic expectations i went through and analyzed the point layers for wyoming uh the audience we're going to jump 
into some of this in pretty granular detail just because i think a lot of our audience already knows this stuff and how the system works but uh right now this is how many people have been in this wyoming system for over 10 years 12,578 non-residents have 10 or more points so these wow. these are people just over there like in, in some broom closet buying points that we never see them and now I'm I'm on Go Hunt right now, but I'm not going to take the time to look. But I can only imagine there's probably only a handful of non-resident tags available in units that take ten or more points to draw. Right. So you think of how long it's going to take to plow through that pile of points? Whew. A long time because non-residents we get sixteen percent of the limited entry tags today. Now, we know that, was it last year or three years ago, they uh, introduced a bill to knock that down to 10%. So, yeah. what what we do know is that that's probably going to change someday. And I think when these point holders get wind of that and they think about it, they're like, well, I better burn my points today before it goes from 16% to 10% and try to get some value out of them so you're seeing a lot of these high point holders jump in each year but even at that it's going to take a long time to burn through them all when you see how many of the units take max points or close to max points and how few tags get allocated so yeah, not going to be a that's... not going to be a big churn rate there when it comes to to how this is gonna unfold so i guess point being folks wyoming is the youngest of all of the point systems but even at that we're at i think 16 is max points this year if i remember right when i looked at all that uh with 16 being maximum points there's 12,578 people with double digit points so wow hey yeah you so, and i yeah, you're just going back when i first drew wyoming and, and all i've ever drawn in wyoming is the general tag uh, mm -hmm. hunting the one of the general units or actually we've hunted a couple different ones but uh when i first started applying in wyoming my first two general tags were leftover yeah. tags there were you yeah. know i i could apply for a draw hunt and then I could put down second choice to, to take a general tag if there were leftovers. And I received that twice, so I got to keep my points. Didn't even have to spend points because I drew it on a second <laughs> choice. Now, there are, if you know, on the special draw, which is the, what are there, 6% six six of the tags in the special draw? 10% uh, are in the regular, 6%. Well, yeah, it's weird with the general, how they back into that general number. It's a 60-40 split between general and, yeah. and regular, or a special and regular, 60 to regular, yeah. 40 to... But for those wondering, Wyoming statutorily has to give us 7,250 non-resident tags. So the first thing they do is they do the limited entry tags at 16% of the limited entry tags. And let's say that comes to 1,250 tags as limited entry tags. Then to make get us up to the 7,250, they got to give us 6,000 of the general tags. And I don't know if I'm anywhere near the, the right numbers, yeah. but that, that's how the <laughs> math works. Uh, and then they split both the limited entry and the general, 60 into regular, 40 into special. So, yeah. Yeah, so looking at uh, in 2015, which we had, I think I'd drawn twice before 2015, but in 2015, there were 1,862 uh, applications for non residents for the special tag. And mm -hmm. last year in 2021, it had almost doubled to 3,200. Uh, total number of general applicants as non residents was 10,855. And that was at 7,109 six years previous. So a lot more people uh, applying for the mm -hmm. general tag in Wyoming. And like you had mentioned, we could draw it on second choice 
And it now takes three points to draw as a special tag yeah. in Wyoming. So Which then you mentioned, I think there was somebody, yeah, what you'd, I think you'd mentioned there was somebody with 14 points that drew a general <laughs> tag. Yeah. Last year, somebody with 14 points decided, you know what, I'm never going to draw the tag I want, so I'm going to burn my 14 points on a general tag as a non-resident in Wyoming. Yeah, that was actually that was in 2020 when that person was, and then last year in the special draw, there were people at the 11 point, 10 point, 9 point, 8 point, 7 point, 6 point. There's people at pretty wow. high point levels just saying, you know what, get me out of here. Uh, so here, here's kind of the trend in the special general draw. 2017, there were 1,900 people who applied for that tag with a zero point. 2021, there were 2,021 people who applied with zero points. So if you just looked at the zero point level, you'd be like, well, that's not much of an increase over five years or four years through the course of five draws, I guess. But you start looking at how many people with three points applied in the general. In 2017, only 197 people with three points applied for the general in the special draw. 2021, wow. 1,263 people applied with three points. <laughs> so that's why you're seeing this inch its way out there because there are people who are like, you know, like you and I, I've churned through that system. Now I've drawn three, not high demand, just average, probably below average demand, uh, limited entry tags since they started it 16 years ago. And I've drawn one general tag. So I think you've got a lot of people who are looking at these numbers and saying, hey, I'm going to get off the sidelines, I'm going to burn my points, and I'm going to be gone. And whether they're at five points or eight points or 12 points, I think a lot of people are doing that. And so it's kind of plugging up the system a little bit, Corey. I, uh, yeah. You know, I, I told you before we uh, got on the – on the air and i think you were like please don't say this when we're recording but uh <laughs> the wyoming preference non-resident preference point pool is like my septic system with a diaper stuck in it you know <laughs> someone flushed a diaper down my toilet and it's plugged up and uh, we're going to be plugged up for a while in wyoming while they try to get through all these really high point holders so don't well and and, and the problem is is when that diaper gets stuck in the line, mm -hmm. there's only one way to to flush that out. Yeah, and it's a messy job. And I don't <laughs> see a, you know, I, I don't see a, a solution here. And we've asked people either. for comments and ideas on solutions for the bonus point preference point scam. That how do we get out of it? You've got twelve thousand people sitting there with all those points that have yeah. waited in line for 10 to 16 years, you go and tell them that uh, they get to be the ones standing at the bottom of the pipe when the diaper comes flushing out, and they're not going to be very happy about it. <laughs> they're not going to be very happy at all. They're, they, 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 there could be some uh, backflow related to that. Uh, yeah. but, so the point of it is, I don't think what you just emphasized, these point systems aren't going anywhere. If anything, they're going to get more complex and they're going to get more expensive. Yep. And that's why I'm so thankful that you have convinced your governor in Idaho to not have a point system. Thank you. I, can I give you credit for that, Corey? You can. I, I'm not, not deserved, but you'll but take I'll it. Take, I'll, take any, I'll take any good credit. Yeah. And then we got to thank somebody in New Mexico for keeping their sanity and not going to one of these elaborate point schemes that uh, don't, they, they really don't accomplish anything. All they do yeah. is reallocate the pie. So, and we all get to pay money to be in the game, but, uh, Wyoming, it's, it's a reality. They're never going to change it with that many people who've been in this system for 10 plus years. I mean, that would, that would result in a lot of turmoil <laughs> because what is yeah. it right now? 50, but with your transaction fee, it's $52 for a point and elk point in Wyoming. So some of these guys are between five hundred and eight hundred dollars just into accumulating their points. Yep. That's not even, and they're willing to, to pay another twelve hundred and eighty-three for a tag. <laughs> I mean, this we're talking, we're talking an investment here that that uh, 
you know, this isn't like a, a free system where everybody's just in line and there's 12,000 people because it was free. These are 12,758 people or whatever who have financially invested into hunting elk in Wyoming and they aren't going to go away. They're, they're going to be in that system. Yeah. But so that I diaper's think, not going anywhere for a long time. <laughs> that septic line is plugged for the rest of my life. Uh, yeah. So, I think what it is, though, it's part of it is a, a tribute to how good of elk hunting Wyoming has managed for. I people ask me what are the two best states I think give non-residents their value, and I, or the best state. Now he's, it's a toss-up between Arizona and Wyoming, and it, if you don't have interest in all the other hunting that Arizona offers you, then I'd say Wyoming is the to, the top value. If you like hunting coos deer and quail and all the javelina and all the other stuff, then Arizona might be a better value. Uh, but Wyoming has quality hunting, has a lot of public land. Their season dates are good. They uh, they just, well, I think last time I looked, average success rate is like over 40%. Which here in Montana, we're lucky if our success rate on b- public land bulls is over 10%. You know, the fishing game is like, oh boy, we're really making progress. Well, Wyoming, they'd just shut her down if they were down at the low success rates we have in Montana. <laughs> uh, so that that's why there's huge demand there. It just it's it's a quality opportunity, and yeah, the price and the special draw is expensive, but there's yeah. more than enough people who view that as a value to what money they're going to spend to come out west or to you know travel to another state and hunt so I, and i don't remember the exact numbers but when the special tag was first implemented i want to say it was 800 and some dollars yeah, or, or something, something like and everybody yeah. was like nobody's going to pay dollars <laughs> for a few years it wasn't too bad and yeah. then people started jumping into that special pool because it gave them better draw odds and mm-hmm. they raised it to 950 or something, and then it hit 1080 and it's at $1,283 now, and there's still all those people, and, and I'm one yeah. of them, guilty yeah. of being like, you know what, I'll pay extra just so I can draw a tag there. But at some mm-hmm. point, they're going to keep raising this price and price people out. Oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. that's not going to be the solution. You know, that's, yeah. that's not the solution to get rid of applicants And if I have 10 to 16 points and I've got that investment and I'm going to burn that many points, I'm going to be looking for a unit with trophy potential. Right. And when you go to go hunt and go to filtering 2.0, I just went there. And if I have 10 or more points and I want a unit that has trophy potential of 340 plus, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine units in the state of Wyoming that meet that criteria. Now, here's the crazy thing. Six of those units are in areas where there is 50 to 99.9% wilderness, which Which, means now 50 to 90% of the hunters applying there are limited to using an outfitter. Yep. So that reduces the number of tags available for somebody who's not going to use an outfitter even more. We're looking at 100 tags available yeah. for non-residents that meet that criteria and there are 12,000 yeah. people in that group that's 120 years to burn through just the people who are there now not to mention the tens of thousands who are coming next year and the year after and the year after and it's yeah. a mess yeah so those of us who thought that point systems were going to solve something all we did is create a bigger pain in the butt oh well Yep. Now I'll get off my soapbox and I'll try to talk about how this system works. Just let's, let's, that's really yeah, right. let's tell but, everybody but how they people, can jump into this system. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, first of all, get out your credit card because everything's online. You aren't, there's no more of this old fill out those pink and white forms they had and mail them into Cheyenne, Wyoming and hope the mailman's dog didn't eat your homework. Uh, but uh, now everything for a long time, it's been online. Uh, January 31st is your deadline. And uh, 
you got to be with the program. They There's none of this, oops, we made a mistake. My, Wyoming's never been one of those states because they've got, they're dialed in. They've never been someone who said, oh, our system crashed. We're going to give you two extra weeks. Don't don't count on that in Wyoming. So get your, get your stuff together, get your application in. But if for some reason you do miss the deadline starting in, I think, July through July October. July 1st. Yeah, uh, you can go in. Through November, and, I think, yeah. Oh, is that through November now? Okay. Uh, yeah, you can go buy a point. Yeah, don't don't be that person. Uh, <laughs> they make you front all the money plus a 2.5% transaction fee. Um, if you're going to archery hunt, don't overlook your archery stamp. And if you draw, you check the box to say, oh, also charge me a conservation stamp if I draw. Um, so just to add to that, you, do, you have to have a conservation stamp if you draw that's required the archery stamp is required for you to hunt in any general unit that you want to archery hunt in if you apply for a type 9 license which is an archery only license so if you want to hunt unit or area x and there is an archery only license available you don't have to have the archery permit oh really it's a, i didn't know that yeah so it's yeah if you apply for archery only that type nine tag, the price of your archery permit is included evidently. Uh, but mm. if you apply for a general tag where you can hunt archery and rifle, uh, you have to buy a, an archery permit to hunt during the archery season. Hmm. Okay. Well, see, learn something every day. Hang around with a smart guy like Corey Jacobson. You, you know, you pay attention. Uh, well, but, I think well, it's, it's just very unclear. And so when I go on there, it's like, well, if I'm getting a general tag, do I have to pay extra for the archery permit? And the answer is, if you want to hunt it during the month of September with a bow, yes, you do. Yeah. And if you apply for the general tag or some of the limited entry units in the, the called the feed ground areas, you're going to get to pay an extra fee to hunt those areas. <laughs> Not a very large fee, but a little bit. So those are just little things that could trip you up along the way. Um, yeah. Wyoming looks at our first choice, even though they give you multiple choices, you're wasting your time with your second and third choice. Uh, it just how it is. They look at everyone's first choice before they go to second and third choices. So all the non-resident tags are going to be snapped up in the first choice, unless you're looking for a cow tag or something like that. But uh, And then... I don't know why it's got to be this complicated. I, I always have to use numbers to make it even slightly make sense. But assuming they have 100 non-resident tags that are going to be in a unit, I don't know if there's any unit out there where non-residents get 100 of the limited entry tags, but let's pretend there is. Uh, so the 16% allocation gets over there with, all right, 100 non-resident tags, 60 of them go to the regular draw, 40 of them go to the special draw. So then the 60 in the regular draw gets split again, 75-25. So 75% of that 60 or 45 of them are issued on a preference point system. And everybody Meaning goes the into the person with the draw. highest number of points. Yep, the person with the highest number of points gets the tag first. And yep. If there's still tags left, they go down to the next point level, and anybody there that applied for that gets that until they reach that 75% of the 60% pool. Yep. So everybody who didn't draw on that preference point portion gets thrown over into the random draw. And with no regard for how many points you have, the other 25% of the tags, or in this case, 25% of 60 is 15, they just get allocated randomly so every year somebody in wyoming draws with very low point totals because they drew in that random portion and they do the same thing over in the special draw okay we got 40 tags there 75 percent or 30 of them go in a preference point draw everyone who doesn't draw there gets thrown into a random draw for the other 10 tags which is the remaining 25 percent so yeah, you make you make it sound really easy and clean when you use the hundred tag number. When you get into a unit mm. that only has seven tags for a non-resident, it gets really ugly. The math on that is uh, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's a screwed up worse than a soup sandwich when you do that. So 
That's right. I only apply in units where there's a hundred tags. I, you know, I know got to keep it simple. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was, I was still stuck on the diaper and septic system analogy uh, and then I, you threw a soup sandwich in there and it just really messed up my lunch hour. <laughs> Corey's looking at me on the video part here that you all can't see, like just shaking his head with his hand over his eyes. Like, I can't believe I do a podcast with this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I do like some of your analogies, but the use of a soup sandwich and a diaper in a, in a sewer line together in the same podcast just doesn't paint a good lunchtime I'm, I'm, picture. I'm pushing it too far, you're saying? Uh, all right. I'll, I'll try to come up with something a little bit better, but I'm running out of material, Corey. So, uh, <laughs> the, But you, you bring up a good point about a lot of these tags – and I think you've done this before, that if you draw a general tag or even a limited entry tag that is a type 1 or a type 2 tag, so long as there's not a specific type 9 tag in that unit, you can go and hunt archery season September 1st through the 30th? Yeah. Is that correct? Is that, yeah, is that the, the trick you guys is. play? So we just draw a general tag. And mm -hmm. in the general tag, uh, it, it gets kind of confusing because when you're looking on their website, uh, anything, it doesn't show a general archery license. It just says right. general rifle. Right. And -E when you draw Gen. that, yep. When you draw that, the only season that actually shows up on the website is the, I think it's October 15th or whatever in most units. Uh, that you can just go and hunt with a rifle. But included in those general units, when you draw the general tag or the general license, you can also hunt September 1st through the 30th in that same unit. And if you don't fill your tag during the archery season, September 1st through the 30th, you can go back and hunt that unit with a rifle on October 15th, whatever the opening day is. So a lot of opportunity for sure. Uh, you know, their states, Colorado, uh, Idaho, you know, they've got some OTC general type things. Wyoming makes a non-resident apply and draw that, but the residents there can just go down to the Walmart and they can buy that general tag and go and hunt any of those units. They can bounce from unit to unit. They can hunt archery. If they don't fill their tag, they can go back and hunt rifle. And we get that same luxury. We just have to draw that license. Yeah, it's it's a bit of an oxymoron for non-residents where it's called a general tag, but we have to draw yeah. for it. So, yeah. but <clears throat> there's there's a ton of great elk hunting in Wyoming. I uh, I think of all the hunts I've been on, hunts I've helped with, uh, it's just remarkable how good of a job they do managing their elk and some people complain well yeah but they give you know residents great preference they get 84 percent of the tags well guess what in a lot of states they give residents 90 percent of the tags my home state of montana we we give residents 90 percent so don't be ragging on wyoming uh, yeah we in idaho we give at least 90 percent non-residents can have no more than 10 percent right. they aren't even guaranteed set aside 10 percent there and you know, I think yeah. most Western states are at the 90-10 the split. Yeah. So New Mexico and Wyoming are kind of the the more generous states when it comes to a non-resident. Colorado and Wyoming. New Mexico lost right. the pipe to us. Colorado. Yeah. But yeah. <clears throat> so uh, when we look at all this, um, some people are probably going to say, well, where do I get all this information? And the first thing, when, when they ask me, where do I get my information? They know I get it from GoHunt. They say, well, I can get that out on the Wyoming Game and Fish website. But nope, you can't. You can get <laughs> some of it. But I'm going to tell you, the. I don't know why I'm going to say this. Can we edit this part out if this is falls under the category of too much information? <laughs> Well, I, think we all have a relative, I think we all have a relative who likes to use the words of, I know I probably shouldn't ask, but, or, yeah. uh, I, I don't want to offend you, but, and Randy's sitting here saying, I probably shouldn't give away all this information, but he's going to anyways. So here's why having the layers of how many applicants have applied at every layer, why it's so valuable. 
but is not something you can get on the Wyoming website. At the Wyoming website, it says, okay, we gave away two tags at nine points, three tags at eight points, and we had one tag left at seven points. And then it just lumps everyone with seven points and below. So you, you don't know what the point pools were. Well, one year when Go Hunt first came out, I'm like, ah, oh, look at that. Everybody looking at the Wyoming regulations thinks that this takes eight points because three guys jumped in and took all the tags at the eight point level. And I looked, and the next person who even applied for the tag had four points. And I had four points. Uh huh. I might stick with this unit, even though it looks like I'm four points behind, because now that I can see the layers of how many people applied at every point level, I bet you everyone's going to think it takes eight points this year. Well, uh, the yep. next year, some of those, uh, once you cleared the deck of those eight point people, all the, you know, six, seven, five point people, they're like, no, I'll never catch up to that. So the next year I jump in, I have five points. Whoop. I get a tag because yep. I had the data that showed me the point level at every or the number of applicants at every layer in the point pool. Why did I just Very tell handy. everybody that? Huh? Corey, Corey's you know, looking at me like, you, you not, Ed? Well, and, and for me, it's not, you know, the general tag. Now we kind of know we're, we're looking at that, the special and the regular and kind of have a, an idea of, how many people are behind us. Um, mm -hmm. But it was never a, a big deal to me because you could draw it with one or two points. Now that we have right. to three or four points, it is important to understand how many people are behind you, how many people mm -hmm. are putting in, you know, I've got three points we have to put in for the special to draw this year. And I'm going to be able to see every level when I'm back to zero points next year of, of what reality is. And that's something that you don't get to see on the website. Any other thing that, you know, I'm, I think you like draw odds. You're, you're huge on go hunts, draw odds. And I mm -hmm. use filtering 2.0. Just, I, I love with my points. I can go in there and say, I've got three points. Where can I spend them most wisely? And yeah. it will show me every unit that I can draw with three points. And then it'll give me a breakdown of the harvest success within that unit, the bull to cow ratio, the percentage of public land. And I can filter out all of that. I'm like, oh, I don't want a honey unit that's only 40% public land. I want it at least 80% and a bunch of units drop off. And so you literally can filter. And I, I've talked about it before of how valuable that is to me of filtering out criteria that doesn't meet I, yeah, why, my needs. Why my bother? Yeah. yeah. And for me, I was pounding them after i think after their first or second year of being in business i'm like look guys i look at at least five years of trends and they now have you know right away they're like oh yeah and so they put that in a long time ago but for me that's super super helpful because i can see a five-year trend is their point creep is it not hardly much creep in this unit because last year's draw odds are great or point pools are great. I also have to do a little bit of projection of where I think that trend is going to go for this year because I'm more concerned about what it's going to happen or what will happen when the draw goes in the upcoming year than what it was the prior year. And kind of like your stock market tells you, right? Past results are no <laughs> indic no uh, guarantee of future performance. <laughs> All right, whatever. So that's it's a lot more detail in there that I use, I would say that I use heavily than what I can get just on the Wyoming Game and Fish website. So, yeah. I just, so. I'll, I'll throw out a, an example because I used it earlier, but 10 points, trophy potential, 340 or more. There are mm -hmm. nine units. If I drop down to my three points now, mm -hmm. I can still draw six of those units. Really? With three points that have a trophy potential of 340 or more. So wow. now I'm looking saying, okay, if I have 10 points, I can draw nine of those units. But with three points, I can still draw six of them. So it, it paints a different around? picture than, yeah, it, it paints a different picture than somebody with 10 points is limited to nine units that they can spend their 10 or more points in and have that trophy potential 
me with only three points, I still have six units that offer the same trophy potential. So with that being said, almost all of those units are 70, 80, 90% wilderness. So I'd have to have a guide or a resident who lives there who wanted to, to hunt with me. And at that point, then I can hunt in the wilderness with that resident. Uh, But there, there's opportunities there that the, you would never find on the Wyoming game and fish website. And that's for me applying in, you know, even four or five units a year, it's not even a question of value. Yeah, it's, I'm, I'm with you. Uh, and what you just pointed out there is how easy it is to identify these trends of diminishing return. Right? You'd say, well, if for 10 points, there's nine units, say a third of that, at three points, there should every, everyone thinks linearly, there should only be three units. <laughs> well, guess what? There's six. It shows you that the longer you wait, the the more you stand around just buying points, the you, you're really not gaining a lot of ground each year. So yeah. that's why a lot of us, I think, of it in all these states, not just Wyoming, we've adopted the idea of I just want to go elk hunting, and I'll let the once in a lifetimers chase the the end of the rainbow try to unplug the septic line uh I, i'm going on i am not going to worry about the <laughs> fact that there's a diaper plug in the septic line uh, so <laughs> i'm sorry Corey. i don't know why that one came uh, up but uh uh but oh, it, well, did. it did so that's the <laughs> one that people got to deal with today uh but the, january 31st you know if you're not in you won't you're you're just out of luck. The beauty of Wyoming is they leave your what do they call it modification uh, window open until somewhere in early May. So, say something happens, you got a scheduling conflict or something else, you can go in and amend your application until about two weeks before the actual draw, which is we get our results like May 18th, 20th, somewhere in there. But uh, they sit on your money for a long time, though. Darn. Uh, that just changed, too. But it used to be they uh, the deadline was January 31st, and by about February 20th, you knew if you were hunting Wyoming. And yeah. if you weren't, you got your money back so you could disperse it to other states, and most other applications were still open. That's uh, changed here a year or two ago. Yeah, and that all changed, but... Uh, <laughs> Well, I think people understand, hopefully, from this. I mean, this is this isn't our normal go through a script and, you know, explain every little bit of it. Hopefully people got the feel of a little more real life application of how you and I look at Wyoming, how we do it, how we use the Go Hunt Insider and the Go Hunt Draw Odds to uh to get those little tidbits that make the difference between maybe getting a tag and maybe not getting a tag. So yeah. um I got anything more we need to add? Oh, if they want to <laughs> sign up for the Insider, they got to use promo code ELKTOK. Go to GoHunt.com, use promo code ELKTOK. They'll give you a $50 credit in their gear shop. And now they get maps, mobile maps, desktop maps, terrain tool, terrain analysis tool that you and I uh, got to help them work on over the last year. I just did a video on that terrain analysis tool here in the office. Did you? And Dale, the camera guy, after we're done, he's like, I can't believe that. I'm like, what? I thought I thought he let me do the whole thing with a booger on my nose or something. He's like, that that just makes life so much easier. He said, I, I'm seeing how you're talking about using this. And I did I did also uh interject your your use of it for hunting down shed antlers and stuff. And oh man. Brady's telling me how he's using it for meal there. And I, I can't imagine when people see that, how many different ways they're going to use it that I would have never yeah. dreamed of a way to use it, but it's a powerful tool. Yep. So. Well, just, you know, like, and I mentioned it a couple episodes ago, but for shed hunting, I, I don't think I've ever been more excited for shed season than I really? am now. And it's still three months away. <laughs> but I've, I've got, you know, this area we go into that there's all these little pockets and little side ranges I've never even been into before. And mm-hmm. 
just using the terrain analysis tool, I'm able to see there's nothing that meets the criteria that an elk would need during that time of year, being you know south exposure and elevation in those drainages. So I don't even need to go and worry about that. But here's these two little pockets I've never been to before, and they are everything that matches that. And they're a little harder to get into, but I bet there's antlers in there. Yeah. And so it just, you know, these little, little pieces, you know, I think everybody can find the big general uh, piece of the pie, but when everybody's eating out of that same piece of the pie, <laughs> you realize there's, there's another pie in a refrigerator hidden back in a closet room here that nobody knows about. And I might be able to have a little bigger piece of pie by going there. <laughs> Uh, that's pretty cool oh man you're you're, uh you're painting a a, 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 almost a mischievous picture here Corey. like Corey's looking at his terrain tool like i'm not telling i'm not i'm not telling donnie about this i'm not telling tyler about this i'm going in there uh that's right uh, no it's uh it's like a lot of things you know it's a little bit that helps you here a little bit that helps you there that's Hopefully you get more out of your time because you and I are blessed that we get to do this a lot. And I'm always trying to put myself in the shoes of the person who this is their one big week a year. You know, they get two weeks of vacation and they work it with family that, all right, I, you know, my elk hunt is five of those days every other year or something. And that's a huge scarcity, or I guess a, it, it, that scarcity of their time puts a huge value on how important it is that they do as much as they can. They have the tools to try and make themselves successful when they go out there and to have fun and, and enjoy the experience. So uh, I think part of this podcast is we try our best to, to give people what those are, what we use, what we do. And uh, hopefully it, it helps them a little bit along the way. Yep. Yeah, it doesn't hurt us any to have other people be successful. No. That uh, doesn't take away from, in fact, it, it adds to my success if I know I can contribute in even the smallest way to helping somebody have a better experience or, or find more success. And that's, uh, like you said, that's why we're here. That's why we're doing it. We are so passionate about elk and elk hunting and absolutely love it. And we don't feel like we want the pie to ourselves. We want to share that pie and we realize it's limited. So we do all we can to make the pie bigger. And if we can help somebody find a hidden pie underneath the stairwell somewhere, then <laughs> even better. Yeah. And right now, if you go out to rmef.org, they're uh, announcing how much they're awarding each of the states for conservation projects this year. And when you say, hey, you know, bigger pie, uh, that's what I always think of is, is how much people benefit from that money going to these states. And there's every, RMEF has, the, they call it PAC. It's not public or political action committee. It stands for project advisory committee. So people within that state, the people hands, you know, hands in the dirt, boots on the ground in that state, get to rank all the projects for that state. And uh, that's how the money gets spent. And then they go find all the matching dollars, everything else. So uh, that's uh, a good place to to see how the pie can be grown a little bit bigger. Go to rmef.org, become a member, and uh, hopefully you will. Yeah. So, and hopefully you'll apply in Wyoming. Just don't take my tag. <laughs> uh, i was gonna say hopefully they don't apply in wyoming so we can draw a tag but i think uh, <laughs> and we get accused all the time Corey and randy are ruining hunting in this state there's so yeah. many more applications because of social media and because of podcasts and yeah. quit looking at it from the scarcity side yes it's harder to draw a tag yes points are going up but let's continue building the the framework yeah. so that we can continue this for a long time and more people can continue it and you're seeing you know i'm seeing elk pictures from elk in oklahoma and elk in kentucky and seasons in kentucky and you know the there's going to be elk in a lot more states and it's going to take a while to get there and it's going to take effort but yeah. instead of sitting here and complaining about two thousand more applicants in wyoming let's uh let's see what other states we can add elk to or how we can grow elk populations in states where there are elk and 
spread out some of this pressure that we're seeing because elk hunting is phenomenal and it's something that we love and it's something everyone should get to experience. And if they can experience it in their own backyard, then there'll be fewer of them coming to our backyard. And that's, that's a win for everybody. Yeah. You, you want to know how many people were in the point pool in Wyoming or still remaining in the point pool in Wyoming since we started this podcast three years ago? How many? 73,000 people were, uh, well, of applicants today, 73,000 of them were already in the point pool before we started ruining hunting. Man. Well, so. there you go. <laughs> <laughs> we're joking, folks. We, we both have smiles on our face when I said that. But So, point being, there are so many people over there buying points. That's why I do videos on this. Don't disregard the point pool, the point buyers. They're like the no, silent stalkers. They're the people who are going to screw up your odds when you think, this is my year. Yes, I'm going to draw the tag. And somebody with three more points than you that has never been as part of the, the draw results jumps in off the sideline, steals your tag, and you get frustrated. And I think we opened yeah. this with... We, <laughs> what causes frustration? Expectations. Unrealistic expectation. So if you aren't <laughs> looking over at those point buyers, however many thousands of them there are, tens of thousands of them, you're going to possibly end up with some unmet expectations, which result in frustration. So. <sighs> and with that, we've painted about as pretty of a picture as we're going to be able to. So. Uh, I don't know. I, I applied in the, the general pool this year in Wyoming. Um, hopefully, I draw. How many points do you have? <clears throat> One. One point? Mm -hmm. You're certainly not guaranteed to draw. No. But we'll see what the draw odds are. No. Yeah. So I well, good luck to you. I would need all the luck I can get. I'm that I'm that person that has unex or uh, unrealistic expectations right now because I am pretty much in my mind guaranteed to draw. Mm, so if a bunch so, of point yeah. buyers jump in and you get cut off, and I draw on the random portion and you don't, you're going to say, "Wait a second, this system is rigged." That's right. <laughs> all right. I hope I draw. On I have to temper my expectations here and realize <laughs> yeah. that I'm never guaranteed. Yeah, but you know what? Wyoming does a great job. It's an opportunity that all non-residents might want to consider if you're a traveling elk hunter. And uh, yep. I think we've, hopefully we've given them an idea how it works. And if they miss the January 31st deadline, there's not much we can do about that. Yeah. Other than it just made our Unless odds better. Unless we publish this after January 31st. Then, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, with uh, our travel schedules and everything, we are cutting it kind of close. January 21st. Ooh, wonder if Joe can get this turned around by Monday. Oh, I'm sure he can. Yeah, nothing for a man of his talent. So. That's right. Well, Corey, you have a great day. You too. I'm going to go get something to eat. Yeah, I'm going to go Dream find... about I'm, a diaper and a septic system. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go find another rotten orange or a brown banana down at the grocery store. So. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, thanks so much, Corey. Thanks, everyone, for being here. Go to GoHunt.com. Sign up for the Insider. Use promo code ELKTALK. They'll give you $50 in the gear shop, and you'll have a really powerful set of tools for what you're doing. That's right. And we'll catch you on the next episode.